The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Hi, this is Ken Gidge, and this is the art of politics. As you know, if you've watched the show before, I love to get Republicans on the show and give them a hard time, just probably as you would. But I, it's, art of politics also does something else. It gets Republicans and Democrats, I'm the Democrat and the Republican that I always have on, or one or two or three, it gets us together and we push each other around verbally, but always we laugh. And it's interesting. After the shows at the State House, we run into each other and we're kind of friendly. And all of a sudden, somebody asks me about a guest I've had on and they, they say something negative. I said, no, the person's, you know, really kind of neat. Now, I've done 31 shows with Bill O'Brien, and believe me, I've had to say he's a neat person and an intelligent. I've also done about 30 shows with Al Baldessaro, and he always looks like he's got a tan. I'm telling you. And in fact, he's not here today. He is in Florida getting a tan. Uh, and he missed the big snowstorm, of course. But today I have someone who also does a TV show. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about that uh, in another part of the state. And he's one of those guys that everybody likes to talk to. He's just cheerful. So let me introduce you to him. His name is Representative Burt. Well, thank you for... Uh, and how the, are you? I, I'm very fine. Thank you for the kind words. That's very nice of you. Well, it is. It's true. It's... Uh, uh, it's uh, you know, you, you're not overpowering. You're not... You, you're aggravating when you talk about politics, okay? Because yes. you're, you're a Republican. <laughs> but other than that, you're, you're, you're friendly. You're, you know, you're not. Everybody can. You're approachable. Well, that's the way I believe it should be. I, I really do. You know, I I am the number two most conservative state rep up in the state house. You know, by this poll, I don't know who took it. And, and just what I look at is, you know, I can stick to my beliefs, but I, you know, you got to get along. And that's what I try to do, and you do that very well. I, there is a lot of members up there that do that. Well, now yeah. there are a few that like to rub, <laughs> rub the salt oh, wherever yes. they can. Oh yes, especially the new ones. Yeah, yeah, the new ones. They 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 don't quite get it. There is a manners and the decorum, and you know there is a <clears throat> there's a particular respect. And you, you've got to you've got to learn that. But you do a show where. Out of Goffstown. Goffstown. And in fact, I believe we did a show before, and it was up in Goffstown. It was. Yes, I've aired this show. Matter of fact, I'm hoping if you, with your permission, I'll grab this show and, and again air it in Goffstown. Ab absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. And if, yeah. if I ever get up there, we'll do the same thing down here. And then we'll, we'll trade. Republican, yeah. Democrat. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I would love that, have you up there. Because, uh, you know, matter of fact, when my show was on... I, I know it's on Thursday and Sunday night at 8. This was like a Tuesday, and I don't remember when it was on, but all of a sudden I get a text on my phone, and I look, who's this Ken Gidge? And I'm like, well, and it's another state rep, so I text back to him, and I said, well, are you? do you sit next to him at the house? I said, he's a good guy. You know, you want to sit next to him. No, he's on TV with you. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> so it is funny how, how people, you know, watch our shows. 
And also, you know, I talked, to, as I started the show off, I, I talked about uh, getting along and trying yes. to get people together. And you have started something, which I believe this will be the third year. Oh, it's going to be my fourth year. Fourth year, and it's called Hot Dog Day. Yes. Yeah, Representative Burt's Hot Dog Day. So explain how that all came about. And it, no, it, it's fun because everybody looks forward to it. Oh, you know, the, last year I almost didn't do it. And when I started spreading the rumor out that, you know, I might not do it because it's a tremendous amount of work. Yes. Uh, last year, we gave over nine, uh, about 900 hot dogs away. They're estimating about 550 to 575 people showed up for it. And it's, wow. it's huge. <laughs> to cook 900 hot dogs is uh, quite a feat. And I'm in the house, so my wife and my uh, volunteers do it. But where it came out of is it was over a campfire bill, and it was to repeal the campfire bill. You know, anything under two feet or smaller, you wouldn't need a permit. You wouldn't have to, as I call it, you wouldn't have to call the government and beg. Can I have a campfire mm. on my backyard that I pay taxes on and I own? I don't like that. So there was this bill that went through my committee, and it came out of my committee 15 to 1. I'm the one that's going to support the bill. Well, they wanted to kill the bill. You know, we can't have this. We must have control of fires. That's what the committee said. So I get up on the House floor, and I, you know, some people say I gave one of my best speeches. It was funny. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, and, and the whole idea, if you can make a speech and get people to laugh in the beginning, the middle, and the end, they'll yeah. vote for you. Oh, yeah. Well, they'll at the, I only lost by six votes. Uh, uh, Speaker O'Brien at the time, he just shook his head, and he goes, Oh, my God, you almost won this, because it's really hard to overturn a committee report. And everybody, and everybody knows that, especially it was 15 to 1. Yes. That's, that's it isn't really, I think it happened once, uh, two years ago when Bill was there. Yes. Something came out, yeah. 17 to 0 or something, and they turned it around. Yeah, and it's hard to do. Yeah, it's Im almost impossible. Yeah. Well, so I get up and give one of my best speeches, and at the end, I, I said, and this is what I'm going to do if you vote with me. And then I paused, and I looked at everybody. And at that point, you can see people sitting up in their chairs. Oh, my God, what's he going to yeah, say? Yeah, what's he going to do? <laughs> what's he going to do? I said, I'm going to have a campfire without a permit, and I'm going to invite all of you that vote with me for a hot dog. Well, when I got done, <laughs> yeah, somebody came up to me, and they said, uh, Representative Burt, you do know that you just broke the law. By so, talking about it? No, I bribed all the reps that voted with me. Oh, bribe <laughs> for a hot dog. <laughs> well, I guess. Well, it's under $25. I mean, well, that's it, but I guess you can't offer anything for a vote. So, and I said, Oh, that's right. Yeah, and I was like, Well, I was kind of like joking. And they said, We all know that, but you know, the news media or somebody report that, you know, we just want to make sure you don't get in trouble. And I said, and I trouble look, for for mentioning. That's right. You're buying a vote for a hot dog. Yes, it I, it really was just a joke, but it was so funny because I looked and I thought at first I said, "Oh my God, could you imagine on Fox News, state representative from Goffstown gets arrested for given uh, for offering, offering a bribe a hot, a hot dog, bribing that would make national oh, news." Oh well, listen, <laughs> you could have run for governor. Oh, I could have oh, that then. one. Yeah. I mean, come on. So a couple weeks later, I get up on the House floor and I said, well, I guess I was a bad boy. I shouldn't have offered just one side hot dogs. So I'm going to offer everybody a hot dog. And I wanted it nonpartisan because I feel that we can go out on the front lawn as, as human beings and just get along for an hour and a half and enjoy a hot dog. And, and it really is. People have told me, other state reps, uh, say this is their highlight of the year. They run into everyone because we, we don't do that. We, we uh, you know, this show argues. And, and, yes. And, but it, I, as I said, at the end or in the middle or, you know, at the beginning, there's laughter. There's, oh, there's, yeah. there's, 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 there's fun involved. And I have made, you know, I've had Republicans just like yourself. Other Republicans said, would say, who is he? And they say, well, he's a good guy. Yeah. And the, so the hot dog day is so popular and it's one of the very few events that you make it very clear that it's not just for Republicans or against Democrats. It's, it's yep. for everybody. It is. And one good thing that I, I 
At first, I didn't do it. Well, I did it first time, uh, but it wasn't my first thought. I said, you know what? Our staff in these buildings, in the uh, legislative yeah, right. office building, the state house, I said, they really work hard for us. Right, right. And they don't get invited to nothing. So I said, this is nonpartisan. I want the staff to be involved. So I go to all the staff. It yeah. takes me a whole yeah. day to go to every door. I yeah. mean, they're, they're, that building's big. Yes, it is. Yes. And I hand everybody a piece of paper. I go through about 150 papers that I pass out on one day before right. Hot Dog Day. And I said, now, look, you're invited. And I go to all the senators' offices, and I said, now, you're invited, the staff and the senators. Well, I'll let the senator know. And I said, no, no, no. You are invited. If you want to bring the senator, please do. Your priority. You come out and have a hot dog with us. And and I've just had overwhelming, you know, thank yous. And then one, and then the first year, I uh, I got uh, one of those, a veggie dogs. Yes. Not that I'm ever going to eat one. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> and, no. And by the way, with 400 people and those 500 hot dogs, and you ate 20. Okay. Yes. Uh, right. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the... And uh, the, I ate 50. Uh, I was surprised that there are some vegetarians that emailed me and said, is that true we're going to have veggie hot dogs? And I said, well, I only got one package. Should I get two? No, I'm happy. And, and now I am up to two packages. You know, we cook about 20 veggie hot dogs that people want. And it's just to get people out on the front lawn and enjoy. You know, the governor's always showing up, Lynch, and now Governor Hassan, she comes out. And, you know, we get quite a few senators and a lot of reps. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's a great time, Ken. I just, you know, and, and all your support. And I mean, you know, because it is a grassroots. It's not just me doing it. Uh, so many reps and staff bring potato salads and beans and everything. I mean, it's really... A grassroots picnic. You know, this is gonna this junk of hot dogs has to stop. But this is where we basically argue. But I did yeah. want to get that out there. Yeah. Absolutely, get it out there because the the important thing is that we don't get together and meet each other. There used to be a hotel down there yes. in Concord, and everybody would go over for a cocktail. Everybody, and if it was a snowstorm, a lot of people stayed there yeah. because they had to be back the next day. Uh, so we don't meet anybody, and in fact, I'm the guy who hops in a car and just goes home. I don't go to this these things, that, but I have to because my wife is now a state representative, which is very interesting. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, now, let's talk about guns, because yesterday there was a bill that you talked for, and it has to do with anyone who can get a gun, buy it legally, I guess, can carry it concealed without a concealed weapon license. True? Absolutely. It is true. Uh, that's the bill. It hasn't passed the law yet. No, come on. I'm Give me a break. Can Are you going to let people walk around with the... Well, I'll tell I mean, you, I'll be honest. I, I'm born and raised in Vermont, the old Vermont, not the Vermont today, the conservative Vermont. Today is the Looney Tune Vermonts. But they still have, because it's run by Democrats, <laughs> I have to get that out there. Here we go. Here we go. Now, now if you want, I'll tie half of my brain behind my back now that we're going to debate. Tie uh, half his brain behind. Well, I, I, like I want to make guy. it. I want to make it fair. He, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> but I was in New Hampshire for nine to ten months. That we, I, I jumped. So in. you should carry a gun. Well, no, I did. They beat you up. No, no. Did they I, break into your house? Uh, people tried, once, people tried. <laughs> but with the gun, they <laughs> laughed very quickly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, what I did is I left so, Barnett, Vermont. I jumped into the river, and I got, I swam over to, you know, you through the... You jumped in the river. Oh, yeah, it was and cold. And you swam. Yeah, I very hard. And you be... are a Republican? Yes. The ladies because... and gentlemen, he <laughs> jumped in a river from Vermont, swam across, and became a Republican. Well, no, I got to New Hampshire, and I got dry foot on, side, on the New Hampshire yeah. shore. And now you guys kept me. So I moved well, to Woodsville, we New Hampshire. Well, I moved to Woodsville, New Hampshire first. And so I was living there. You had to work your way down. Uh, I did. There, yeah. And I was here probably uh, nine to ten months. Somebody says, oh, you carry? And I said, yeah, I carry all the time. And mm -hmm. they said, oh, so you must have a license. And I said, what's a license? Well, and then they explained what a license is that. I got to beg the government. So I, oh, stop it. Will you stop it? You I did. Want, you I, want I pulled, nutcases. I, I pulled want, my constitution out. I know, but you want nutcases to have guns walking around with guns. 
Vermont I, is the I, safest state I, in the in oh, the nation. Oh, Vermont! Are you kidding me? They they're, are. They're Ken. elitist, for God's sakes. They're coming from New York City. Now they don't want guns. They get, well, they, they are trying they to change have that. Looney Tunes there in Vermont. In fact, <laughs> he swam the river to get over here. Now you see what I mean. Yes. But, <laughs> so now wait a minute. Let's see if I've got this straight. If you own a gun legally, is this correct? So, in other words, you've got to buy a gun and you've got legally. to go through the... The background check. Background check. Yes. yes. Okay, so if you own it legally, yep. does it have to be your gun or anyone's gun? Ha-ha, got you. you I guess know. it can be anybody's gun. Well, you're not sure. Well, because I well, have borrowed guns yeah. before to go shoot in. Well, that doesn't make any difference. If nobody catches you, I mean... Well, but it's legal. You can do it. Now, they're trying to make it not legal. What? what do you but mean? All my, almost all of my guns were bought private sale because I don't want the government to know how many I have. Oh, for God's sakes. No, you had a, why, why, why did you say Vermont? I mean, they have your <laughs> hot dog days and come over here. No, serious. You know, so what we want to do I mean, is... What, are you, what are you afraid of? Uh, I don't know stormtroopers jumping into your house. I mean, well, what you got is the chickens. government afraid you got chickens. of? You got, you got attack chickens in your I do get to, yeah. Yeah, yeah you got yeah. attack chickens. Yeah. I mean, nobody's going to get next to you. No, Big Chicken's going to let me know. I got, you know, that's her name. She's huge. Big Chicken. Yeah, she's a buff Brahma. If anybody's out there that knows what chickens are, a buff Brahma, they're big. Make a lot of noise. No, she's the quietest one out of the bunch. There's a little gray one. I don't know what kind she is, uh, some silver lace back or is, whatever is she that, is. Is that going to be Sunday dinner? Yeah. <laughs> Come in. That's Sunday dinner. Uh, well, I would if my wife would let me, but my wife's laid the law. That, uh, you you know, can she, have them, but you can't eat them? She named them. Oh. Yes. Oh, does she bring them in the house? And... Uh, she tries. Uh, you know, if they're sick, she wants to bring them. And I said, no, 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 no. So I am building a second coop. It's going to look like a church. A church. Yeah, I'm building it to look for like... For chickens. Well, that's going to be the ICU. Church. Are you going to... The ICU? It, it, yeah, the ICU. It's going to be the intensive oh. care unit. So when our chickens... I don't want our chickens in the house. You know, I don't have to make fun of you. You do it yourself. <laughs> He's building a church for his sick chickens. <laughs> now, are you a religious person? Oh, I, I do. Do you go to church God. every Sunday? No, I do not. Well, what's so religious about you? Well, because where does it say I have to go to church to believe in God? So, I mean, who's going to, do you bring someone over to, to sort of bless your chickens? No, or? God knows I'm good. Oh, God. <laughs> you see, I, I always say I belong to the Abraham Lincoln Church. If I do good, I feel good. If I do bad, I feel bad. Yeah. And that's. Well, well I'm Baptist, and my stepdaughter, uh, my wife's Catholic. And my stepdaughter. Ooh, ooh, she Baptist and Catholic? Well, she says, uh, my daughter, my stepdaughter goes, Mom, I'm going to change to be a Baptist like oh, John. No. And whoosh, there goes the head, the, oh. the mother. You're not going to change. <laughs> Is she religious? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. My does, wife's does very she religious. Go to... She goes to Catholic church. And does she take your daughter? No, she isn't going right now. Okay. Yeah, because she's, you know, 20. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, okay. she's in her 20s. Right, now. Okay, all right. Yeah, so she, you know, we're uh, empty nest, you know, no empty children. Nest. <laughs> so why don't you use the room for the sick chickens and still build a church well, that's for chickens? <laughs> I see you for chickens. Well, well, what you my, might be able to make some money up there. Well, I could. Well, what my daughter said, when my stepdaughter goes, she go, her mother goes, why do you want to be a Baptist? John. John. What is your, she looks at me and she goes, John, what do you, your church do when you mess up? And I said, the preacher usually says, hey, stupid, uh, straighten out, don't mess up anymore. And she goes, there you are. Because being well, Catholic, I guess you got to say Hail Marys and all these things. Well, yeah. uh, you know, I don't know, you know oh, I mean, not to offend yeah. anybody. Yeah, it sounds like, that's not, that sounds like a real religion. Uh, all right, I ran over the dog on purpose. All right, okay, uh, just well, don't do it again. Well, that's it. The Hail Marys and sit down and get on your knees and pray. Oh, so you must be Catholic. No, then. I'm a oh, yeah. Methodist, mainstream well, Methodist, Methodist church. Methodist? They're pretty close to I Baptist. Been, are they? No, they're not. You, you don't Baptists think so? Are, uh, are edgy. Aren't they edgy? Well, the, different southern, parts of the, country. the Southern Baptists the southern are Baptist, uh, out there a little further than I would like. A little like. Yeah, okay, further. A lot, a lot further. Well, they, they have one, one foot over from the people with the snakes. Well, some are, yes. You mean there are Baptists who, who do the snake things? There is one Baptist church. I saw it on oh, YouTube. I don't know if it's still there, but it was a with video. With the snakes? Oh, yeah, with the snakes. Live snakes. Yep. And I'm like, okay, that's a little further than I want to go.
Well, yeah. there you go. I believe in God, but I'm not going that far. There we are. You got to be a Baptist. All right. So <laughs> let's, let's get back to this gun thing. You, you, the, the, the bill came up. It is to carry a gun. Without a license. Uh, uh, without a license, but you have to have gone through a background check. If you buy the gun. But if you don't buy the gun, you can carry somebody else's gun yep. without a background check. Yep. You can have a loaded gun in your car, which I see no problem. Okay, so let me get this straight. Anybody, which is there Law a, is abiding. There a, a, well, what does that mean? Law abiding, what do you mean? No felony. Yeah, a felony is not supposed to. A, fel a person with a felony is not supposed to carry a gun. Or domestic violence. Yes, or domestic violence. Like yeah, but yeah. you know what? Yeah, they but, do carry guns. Who? The felonies. Well, that's not. That doesn't make you happy. I hope. No, no. But this law that restricts me does nothing to restrict the felon. Well, if, if the felon's going to carry, he's going to carry. It's like a, in a domestic, you know, male or female. You know, I'm not going to, you yeah. know, because I hate when everybody says, when the man beats the wife. You it know, goes both that's ways. That's not true either. It There's goes both a ways. lot of people don't talk about that. And also when they talk about women, they don't talk about the lesbians fighting with each other. They always say women. Oh, and I didn't also even think of that. The, the, the gay men also. So. Uh. So it, domestic violence can go. Yes. In fact, I had a big discussion about that to a lady who was absolutely nuts when I brought that up. But I said, well, the statistics are there. The, the, the gay women do fight. Yeah. You know, if you're together a long time, you fight. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Well, thank you for saying that because so many, you know, there are so many people out there that just ignore the other side of the abuse. It comes on TV, and I feel guilty as if I did something wrong. You know, they yeah. always talk about domestic violence. Well, why don't you mention everyone? Not every guy. Listen, I grew up with two sisters. Domestic violence with my... With my oh. You grew up with two sisters, one older, one younger. You don't fool around. You understand that the girls are... Oh, yeah. Yeah, I had two sisters beat on me all the time. Yeah. But that was just part of growing up, being a brother. And, I, uh, you know, and, and on their defense, I probably deserved at least 75% of it. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> does your wife watch a show? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She okay, does. there we go. All right. Yeah. No. Uh, so where was I? Oh, with the domestic violence. I mean, if the person wants to get a gun and harm that other person, they're going to do it regardless if they have a license or not. Well, how about if we have it this way? How about if everyone who wishes to, let's say, carry a gun, uh, get a background check? Why not? Why shouldn't a person have a background check? If you're, if you're going to carry a gun, you should have a background check. In other words, they, if they get on the computer and say, Ken Gidge, well, guess what? He's got, you know, he's nine people when he was... See, I younger. Would, well, that was Senate Bill 244, similar to it last year. Yeah. That was defeated yeah. in the House <clears throat> uh, by Democrats, defeated it with the Democrat-controlled House. Uh, but what I look at with that, I almost do agree. I Not that I would support it because I'm no, against no, any... No no, 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 hold on a second. I almost agree, but I wouldn't support it. Because you I like You can't the... do that. I agree, but no, I no. like this. It's not a fun house where you can stand in a mirror and there's two of you, <laughs> two right sides. No, 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 no. You believe that people should not carry guns if they are felons, correct? Correct. Okay, so if you're carrying a gun, how are they going to know you're a felon? But this is the slippery slope to that scenario. It happened in uh, Australia and England, which are disarmed now. Their citizens are disarmed. Well, America will never be disarmed. You know That's that. true. It's not a constitution. But For what God they're going to do is this is the slippery slope, is they're saying, okay, we only want the six extreme nutcases in New Hampshire not to carry a gun. I support that. I support people that are domestic violence. Uh, people that yes, are, are how felons. Are gonna, how are you going to know this? But this a is the issue. Carry, listen, I'm carrying a gun, yeah. right? I'm carrying a gun. And I'm not carrying a gun, but if I was carrying a gun and I had a license, all right, or no license, yeah. they're going to, and they say, well, you got a gun. What's your name? Are they going to, do you want the police to turn around and, and... Well, the police can do a quick background check just by calling you in. Is there an issue with domestic violence or is the guy's felony? 
Okay, so, so they, they don't the, need that they, license. They take the gun That's away what they do in Vermont. they get arrested? That's what they do in Vermont, and I think five other states have constitutional carry now. Really? Yes. Well, I don't know. I and so what that. they do is they just call your name in with your information, and, yeah. and they come back and they say, no, there's no felons, you, there's no you, domestic you violence. You guys, he's sitting here and he's being polite, but let me tell you, he's a ravage... <laughs> Dog eating, what chicken I, killing person when it comes to guns yeah, and being I, a Republican. I am. If you're a second conservative, that smile, all right? I, Remember, I, that's a very disarming that. smile, but you are a rattlesnake. <laughs> when it comes to the Second Amendment, yeah, I yeah. will bite. All right, all right. I now, will. I am number two in the Second Amendment area, too. And I don't like being Who's number, number one. Well, J.R. Hole. Oh. He, yeah, okay, see, all right, right there. All right. All right. <laughs> Would you agree? No, I mean you're you're first. You gotta be if you you you're, you're well, I'm, I'm probably semi, so, you know, semi saying is a real. But oh, wait a minute, aren't you in the famous row? I am. Oh no, I, wait. I, I sit right next to Bill O'Brien. So you are in the very I'm in famous murders row. Murders row. And what what row is that? Because because what happened was this big thing about you know the speaker electing a speaker and Sean Jasper outsmarted them, but they were so mean to Sean Jasper, which you have a right as a speaker to put anybody you want. Yep. Okay. So there's a, a what row is it? It's the third from the top in the third section. So it's right where the cameras all, the media, right in front of the speaker, basically, but it's up toward the back. Okay, so he can keep an eye on all of you. Oh, we got a, a so, straight eye direction. Uh, yeah, now, wait a minute, there's, there's Bill O'Brien, there's yourself. At the very end, it's, was his Stepnick is his Yeah, name? Stepanak's on the other Stepanek. side. okay, he's at the other end. Yeah. Baldessaro. Is in the dead center right, middle. right, dead center middle. Oh, I imagine he's talked about that. Oh, yes, 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 he's <laughs> gonna, he's gonna do something. Yeah. So, who else is in that row? Uh, J.R. Hull, yeah. Kapler. Yeah. Uh, uh, Susan DeLamis. Really? Oh, yeah. She's a, a hard liner, as if you want to call it, on the conservative side. Uh, I'm not sure who the other. I, I'd have to look. Well, anyway, that, that that's that's a, a payback row. And if you put right in the middle, especially, you, you, you know, I understand... Baldessaro, I talked to him a lot, obviously, okay? Yes, yeah. And when Jasper became speaker, he kept calling him the Democratic speaker before he got the seating, all right? <laughs> so if you're there for any period of time, that means you do, you're usually doing business, so you got to be closer to the edge. Yes. Because if you're doing business and you 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 got bills, you got to, everybody's got to stand up. I'm four in, and that's fine. I, that's what I wanted. Yeah. I'm a little closer. I'm four in. That's nothing. Now, I where's up, your wife? Uh, she's on the other side oh. of the hall, and she sits uh, next to Jackie Silly. Oh. So she's got quite a. Yeah. Jackie Silly's right on the end. Yeah. And my wife is just one one in. Yeah. So that's pretty good seating. Yeah. Yeah. I said, I want to change with her. Why don't you put her in for? But that's okay. Yeah. Seating does make a difference, obviously. Well, I've always sat in that area. You know, my first seat was uh, just a couple seats up. My next one was one row up. Now I'm back three or something. I have spent four years in the same row, oh. one seat up. No, yeah. I, on the other side, from yeah. both sides. So. Yeah. So, uh, well, and for, you know, probably for the viewers, uh, we do get assigned seats. Yes. And that's why it's on our license plate. That's so when you see a license plate, yeah. it doesn't mean like mine is 261. Yeah, mine's 337. All right. So if you. Dash 37. Right. If everybody thinks that those numbers mean something, it just means where you are sits. Yep. You know, section you're, three you're, and I'm you know, seat thirty seven. Behind. That's, that's what I always thought so. That's where I'm gonna be that's for That's an years. ass license plate, I thought. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But now I don't know how I got there then. You know, am I that bad of a boy to sit in the bad boys row? Well, come on. Now over guns, I will admit. No, I, I well man. I did bring guns back to the state uh, to the house yeah, chamber. But, yeah, but Sean Jasper the speaker's not against guns. No, no, he's not. No, I mean what well, you know, you guys gave him a hard time, so he, he, yeah. that's punishment. <laughs> but he did let O'Brien at the end. That's, that's, that's respectful, okay? Yes, yeah. But this guy, Stebnik, I would like to put him, you know, in <laughs> Manchester. Yeah. I'm telling you, this guy gives me such a hard time.
He's mean spirited. Oh, he gives you a hard time. Yeah. Why? But yeah, he doesn't tell jokes, does he? He doesn't know how to tell a joke. I don't know. I mean, I don't know him really, really well. I just know who, you know. How long have you known him? Well, he was there my first term. Okay. And he kind of, you know, he didn't know who I was. And okay. First of two years. And then he was gone the second term. Okay. So now he's back. Okay. So now he's, you're going on three years and you don't even know the guy and he's a Republican? Oh, I, there's a lot of Republicans. I, I know who they my are. My point is he's not friendly. Well, <laughs> they always say, all right, yeah. right, and you are a friendly person. Yes. All right. Yeah. We, we, we will agree to that. Yeah. All right. So now, you, you do know you're going to be our next speaker if yeah. you take over control in 16. <laughs> Here we go, ladies and you gentlemen. You are. He's pushing me as speaker. I'll tell you what. If I go, I'll run for speaker. Okay. All right? Yeah. So <laughs> if, if the Democrats take control in 16, if you get No, the, no, no, no. I, uh, yes, if they take control, but by a little. Because our swing that I we will like. stand up in the caucus, caucus, yeah. okay? Yeah. And if I get some, you know. All right. I could win it. I'm pushing. You know, I mean, uh, <laughs> Jasper did it. Yeah. I mean, that was, that just, was quite give a. give me a good seat. That was quite a, a coup. That's all. Oh, it was. Yeah. That was very, very, uh, yeah. very political. Yeah. And, and, and I, you know. I, and I, I do agree with you on, or many, uh Democrats that, you know, if we went to the vote when we first walked in there and do, didn't do the shenanigans as the papers reported and everything, I think Bill O'Brien would have Bill O'Brien would have, what happens is, and, I, I, and I've done this on, on, on the show before, here are the rules. The Republicans and the Democrats, Republicans agree, Democrats agree, here are the rules. We get downstairs and in front of us seats are new rules. That was the whole yeah. All right, so he would have won it. Yep, I, I, I really do believe that. Yes, because it was too much arguing. That should, that should have been done in like 10 minutes, 20 minutes. Oh, yeah. It went on for how long? Three hours? Oh, or yeah. Like? yeah, a couple hours at uh, least. Yeah, that was, all right, uh, so we did the guns. Uh, Northern Pass. What is a Northern Pass? Tell our listeners. The what is? Northern Pass. Oh, Northern Pass is uh, from a big, it's a big power line. From Hydro Quebec in uh, you know, by Quebec, you know Canada, and it comes down through, you know New Hampshire to Franklin, I believe. Yeah, and then it's distributed on existing lines. Yes, and the big argument is, it's going to be an eyesore. And so the people in that part of the world want to keep it so pristine and yes. look nice. They don't want to pay. You know, electricity is really going to be really important one of these days. Well, over the past few years up to date, we have lost, I just did a show on it, uh, don't quote me on the number, but it's sim I think it's like 3,800 megawatts of power, which is huge. From who and why? Uh, power plants are shutting down. For example, Vermont Yankee shut down. Some of the coal plants in Massachusetts have shut down. Because they're 40, 50 years old, they said, you know, to upgrade, it's right. going to cost 100 right. million, so let's just... Right. And, and, you know, it's interesting is Canada is our brothers and our sisters. Let's Absolutely. face it. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. They, you know, I'm, you know, French is obvious. I'm yep. some, my mother was French. All right. Okay. Uh, so, and they have more power than they can... Oh. I mean, they, they just... They, yeah, they right. want, yeah. They, they give fish power. You know, yeah. the, fi the fish up there, if you want to catch fish, you go up there, they glow because they have so much power, they glow the fish. Yeah. Right. If anybody believed that one, <laughs> here we go. So they are complaining about wires. And yes. we don't, not going to have enough electricity. So I say, too bad. That's what I say. Come to Nashville. Yeah. yeah. You know, we, we, we send things up, up there to, to wherever it is, past Franklin. Yeah. Well, what I tell everybody is, you know, I live on, on, on Bay Street in Goffstown, and the street that comes from Mass yeah. Road down is Lynchfield. Mm -hmm. I get along with almost everybody there. I get along with everybody. But let's say if half of Lynchfield's street, the road, said, hey, we don't like power. We're not going to let it through. I'll be in the dark. That's right. 
Well, you know, we're in this together, New England. No, 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 no. Hold, hold, hold on a second. On well, power, we are. Yeah. No, wait, no, wait a minute. We're, no, we really are in this together, you and I. But there are people who live up further out of, and they don't even want windmills now in some ca in yeah. some places. Yeah. They don't want wind. So yeah. why don't we just shut the electricity out for a week for them and let's see what would happen. Yeah. You know why? We get in a lot of trouble because there's probably a lot of rich people and farmers don't so understand me. Well, I mean, there are some legit people up there that live there that don't want it. So I don't want to negate them. What because are the I, legit people? Uh, uh, they've lived there for all their lives. So you know, they're, what... If they live there all their lives, they've had electricity, but... Yeah, they're just saying they don't want to in, see the power in line. In 25 years, they're going to need electricity. Well, they'll probably be dead. Yeah. Well, but, you know, the people that upset me that are complaining are the paid people from Massachusetts that come up here. Or the people that have second homes up ah, here. Ah. They'll go up on top of a mountain and clear 13 acres to build their house. So they've scarred that mountain, as far as I'm concerned, with that house. So I have to look at it every time I drive by. There's that house sitting there. Yet they don't want a power line coming down through. The same way with the gas pipeline that's going through Hollis. And I think, is there any of it coming you know, here? Oh, Hollis is so rich. My God, they will, they'll put, they, they will, can make walls of $100 bills to stop it. I mean, they, they just... Well, I hear it's it, coming. Yeah, it, it's not coming. They never do. All right. So the Northern Pass is something that, that other people down here may not know about, but it's a big thing up in Concord. And yes. There's a whole bunch of money involved with it, and they don't want to see power lines. Well, too bad. I'm sorry. I look at power lines. We use electricity. You use electricity. We're going to need it. Our friends up in Canada have more than they can use, correct? A ton of, a ton of it. A ton of it. Yeah. So, too bad. So, we'll, so we'll, we'll vote for that. I'll get well, I did ask uh, the Northern Pass lady that came on. I said, why did we stop at 1,200 megawatts? You know, why didn't we take 30 megawatts or 3,000 right, uh, 3, right. like yeah. we need? Yeah, what did she say? Uh, it's because of the power lines. The uh, it can only handle so much, and the towers can handle so much weight. And that's it. And it's engineering. So I go, oh, that makes sense. So, but if they would have built them bigger and stronger, we would have yeah. never. Well, now, do you have that big... climb on top? I mean, see Boston. <laughs> You've been to Goffstown. <laughs> yes, I have. In Bedford, we have that big three-phase line coming down the three big Correct. towers. Yes. Does that go through Nashua? Uh, everything goes through Nashua. Yeah, that's what yeah. I think. Yeah, yes, I think it yes. does come down. Yeah, yeah and does. that goes to Boston. I mean, you know, they built that. Well, it was really funny because the lady said, "You know, today, could you imagine building the interstate?" No. There'll be every tree hugger out there going, "Oh my God, you're gonna kill a mosquito!" Well, listen, <laughs> if you if we had as much property, the only way I see it, it wouldn't happen is the, there'd be houses there. So you really, you know, you couldn't do it. Well, know. how did they build the highway in Nashua? Well, the they, park, take, they just the, took the, the houses. The parkway has has should have been done twenty years ago. There were houses and property purchased a long time ago. Oh. People still living there, paying rent, and all of a sudden, when they finally say, "Okay," because my uncle had to sell his property, a, a big property down in the Milliard, okay, a big uh, machine shop. Now they want to sell it back to him because they're not going to tear it down. Uh -huh. Well, he's, he's deceased. It's someone else who owns it now. But so the property was sold 20 years ago. So he really didn't. So we, he did his business there and paid taxes or, yeah. or whatever. So there were people really upset. But Nashville really has no straight way in. Think about it. Is there, yeah. how, how do you get into Nashville? You got to go down side streets and. Yeah, and they so, got some beautiful churches up there. My God. Where? Down in Nashua, the, you know, down into the city. You know, oh, I, 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 I'm trying to think. I think I St. Patrick's. Well, I came across the yeah. bridge. Across the bridge. Yeah, I was across the river. Hudson. Yes, I Coming was over from in Hudson. Hudson. Yep, and I crossed a. It was a two-lane bridge. I come over into Nashua, and you know, I'm not familiar with downtown. Right. And all of a sudden, up on this hill was this oh, enormous. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Church. And that I, was your soul, by the way. For a million dollars, I think. Well, really? about five years ago. Well, I drove up to it, and I just looked at the steeple. Isn't that something? And I go, how did they build this? The, yes. And that was too bad because what happened was uh, a certain population, they, they stopped coming. 
Uh. Or so here is this bridge that, you know, should, should be never touched. Nothing should be done to it. Yeah. It's really an incredible. But I think someone bought it for a million dollars or something. Wow. Uh, yeah, they're going to do it. All right, so we did another pass. Okay. Uh, uh, let me see. Well, you have some bills here yourself? Yeah. I well, let's talk, talk about one of yours, and we'll talk about one of mine. All right. I talked real briefly last time I was on here. It was about the child daycare agencies. And and I think I got a lot of support on both sides in the committee. It was just heard the other day. And it was, uh, is it Representative Chase? Uh, C-H-A-S-E? I don't know. She's a Democrat. I don't know. Yeah, been there forever. There's so many. It's interesting. It's, uh, everybody should know every, everybody. Oh, there's 400 of us. You can't, yeah. yeah. Well, what was funny is when it came to question time and what my bill does is right now d the daycare agency within HHS, the Human Health Services of the state, can come in and grab little Tommy at four years old and bring him into a private room and interview him with nobody there. And I just think that's terrible. Well, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Someone just can't walk in and grab little Tommy and bring him into the room. They Someone can. has to say, we think little Tommy is being abused. They get little Tommy and bring him into a room. What you're saying, you don't want that at all? Not daycare. Daycare can't bring him in. The state will come in. So little Tommy doesn't know the, this, this state worker. So state worker comes in, says, hi, daycare. We have a complaint, and it involves little Tommy. Okay. We're going to take little Tommy in a private room and lock the door, and we're going to talk to little okay, Tommy privately. Okay, so what is wrong with that? Because little Tommy is scared at that point. Yeah? And he will say whatever Might they say, tell him. Well, why don't, it's very simple today. I mean, you can, you know, I've got an iPhone. You can record and take. Well, that's what this is. So what this it bill does. This, it must be recorded if that happens. Is that a third party, daycare or a designee or a parent, can go in in the interview in video or audio tape if they want. It's not mandatory, but as long as there's a third person in there with so little So this Tommy. is just daycare? Yes, this is just daycare. Now, Representative Chase, one of her first questions or answer, uh, comments to me, she goes, I'll tell you right now, Representative, if, you know, if they ever did that to my grandchild, they'll be hell to pay. And I said, look, they have the legal right. So you have no say. So I think I have a lot of support in the committee to get this out of the committee with a favorable number and put it on the I House mean, floor. Th this came up usually when a bill comes up, there's a reason for it. Well, why, why did you bring the bill up? Uh, a lot of daycares that I'm visiting, uh, HHS is, is almost a little heavy-handed with the daycare people right now. So unfortunately, a lot of, as I call them, underground daycares are popping up. So the state is not regulating them. Uh, the, they're supposed to be, but they, they anybody can take two or three kids in. Yes, but there are places taking five and six, ten kids, and at that point you're supposed to get state approval. Right. Well, they're not because it is such a hurdle to jump over. So the existing daycares are being just plummeted with these rules that in some cases... You know, especially in my eyes, I'm looking that now that I'm traveling the state, looking at all these daycares, they're saying, thank you for saving us. Please save us. You know, the state is heavy handed. You know, we they understand that the state has to be part of it. And I do, too. Well, this is just, are you saying that this just, is just a small that's part? That's just a small part. So you're going to try to chisel away. Yes. But the state is, you know, unfortunately, they came in and they uh, said that they support, uh, do not support. Do that. not support it. Yeah. And what I kept saying, I said it a couple times, is the attorney was sitting right behind me, and I'd say, you know, just imagine him with your little grandchild. And, I mean, I probably shouldn't have used the no, fear factor. Have, no, you shouldn't have. You, no, <laughs> no, it's a, he, see, you can't, this guy can't be trusted. He bribes with hot dogs. Yeah. He's building a church for sick birds, and he doesn't go to church. And his wife names the bird, so there's no dinner. No. Do you ever have chicken at your house? Or? Oh, we have chicken all the time. You we chicken love chicken. All the time, yeah. Huh? Yeah. yeah, a little Sally out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but there won't be any of them. No, all right, yeah. all right. They, they make well. Uh, I've got two bills. We'll go through one yeah. quickly. Uh, one is a teacher protection bill. 
Yep. And what this basically says is simply if a teacher breaks up a fight uh, and has to put his or her hands on people to push them away, that's not considered an assault, and they should not be sued for that. Well, I, I would agree. If they're breaking up a fight, someone's getting beaten up, if a teacher goes up and breaks it up, by the laws in the school, they're supposed to call for help first. But if he's seeing somebody get beat up, what yeah. are you going to do? Yeah. I mean, I used to fight all the time in school, and I hated it. What do you mean you used to fight? Oh, kids used to want to fight me all the time in school. And I, I, I'll tell you, I hate fighting. But, well, how'd you do? Oh, I usually won, especially for some reason. I don't know why, but you pop my glasses off and I go crazy. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, the second my glasses would fly off, then it was like... <laughs> You know, the old dukes would fly. Uh, but I remember the teacher coming right up, grabbing me right by the shirt collar, Same. pulling, and this is Same. in the 70s, yeah. pulling me right up, burnt, calm down, and they throw us, you know, throw yeah. me over to yeah. the side. Yeah, and, well, the, the, those, but, those so, you, so the teacher's not so allowed the, no, to touch a child? No, but, well, they're supposed to, first they're supposed to do is, is call for help. And that right there is a, is a very critical moment if you see a fight. By yeah. taking place, okay. Yeah. Uh, and believe it or not, the, the, the great, the, the people who fight against this are people who have uh, disabled children. And I said to the lady, I says, well, your child is disabled. If the child is getting beat up, do you want somebody to stop it? She says, yes. I said, well, how about if your son is beating somebody up, don't you want somebody to stop that? No, I don't want anybody to touch my child. And I go, uh, yeah. I can't reason with that. Yeah. No. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. Yep. yep. So, uh, so there's a. We, and, now, you where's know, the bill? The governor has a disabled child, and they run to the governor, and so that that's in the mix of everything, and that'll, that'll be coming up. But I also have a bill, which uh, you. How many bills do you have, by the way? I put six in. You got six. Way in. too many. Yeah. Okay, we'll talk about one more bill of mine, and then we'll talk about one of yours. Yeah. Okay, I put one in for. Uh, to study the income that arts bring in in the state. Uh, is there a, a revenue? We give so little to arts, yeah. but arts contribute a lot to our treasury. How can we take a look at the arts in its totality and to see what it's doing? And if we can, if it's, if we can inspire it to bring, because arts bring in culture, uh, also bring, obviously, people into the state. But how much do, do they spend? Yeah, yeah. You know, so if we find out, uh, maybe we can see contributing to odds more from the state could bring more money in. And that's an investment. And I think that you guys, Republicans, want to cut everything, but you don't want to invest in anything. And uh, that yeah. could be an investment. I, I, I think I would look at that. You know, your yeah. first bill, I definitely would support. Yeah. The second yeah. one, I would have to look at the numbers. Uh, well, the, it's going to be a study, basically. And we, yeah. we've got some pretty intelligent people who like to get in there on the study. Now, have you, are, are they gone to committee yet? It's gone to the committee, and it looks really, really good. I, I just think it's going to fly out. That's yeah. all. Yeah, that's good. So I'm going to try to get the Republicans and Democrats to go along with us to, yeah. to take a look at it. And, because all it is is a study. I mean, look, if you put $1 down and you get... Three dollars back. Well, that's an investment. We yes. spend three hundred million uh, to run our liquor company we have in the state of New Hampshire, but it makes six hundred and twenty million last year. So it, all right, it made a hundred percent plus profit. Well, if you can show this a million and you get four million back, well, it's an investment. And besides that, arts do more. It's a culture also. It brings people into the state. Yes. Yeah. I mean, people want uh, uh, large companies come in. What, what do you have for, for my employees? What, what is there out yeah. there? And, well, it's uh, like, I don't, do you have a palace? I know Manchester has the Palace yes, Theater. Right. Do you have one down here? Uh, we're building an arts center, supposedly. We had one. It didn't work out. And, they, you know, Nashville's done very good. They have what is called a, a, a sculpture symposium every year. And uh, it's, uh, we've got awards for it, et cetera. So, so Nash is doing pretty good in the arts. But even then, I don't know how to get the, the facts of, uh, of all the people who sell out. I'm an artist, yeah. right? I sell out. How much do I contribute in, in tax-wise? When I go out, 
uh, to buy out, I'll go to, a, a, let's say, a play. I put down, I think the, uh, in Concord, the, uh, <coughs> is it uh, Concord Arts, what is it called? Oh, yes. Yeah, right yeah, on we, Main Street yeah, there. Yeah, you yeah. know what I'm talking about. It said that they took a, a uh, asked people after shows, I guess, for a whole season, and they spent about 18 or $20 each person. Extra, besides the... Yeah. Uh, so anyway, that's one. Now, uh, is the uh, is the committee going to look at local too? You know, for if the locals do it. Well, w that's the whole thing. The whole thing is, how can we get a lot more information than there is, and putting it together? I mean, the arts spend something like 120 million dollars, and I, I I looked at it. It only contributed five million to the treasury, and I'm going what? And we spend less than four hundred thousand dollars. I'm going, these numbers are wrong, you know. Uh, anyway, yeah. that's that's yeah. two of my bills. We've got about eight minutes. One more of your bill. Well, my last bill is a, one of them is a suppressor bill, and what a suppressor is, it goes on the end of a gun. Here it's we another go, gun man. bill. <laughs> and it's to be uh, uh, suppressors are allowed in New Hampshire currently. They just are not allowed during hunting. During hunting? Yep. In 35 states, Ohio is the 35th state over Christmas uh, holiday. Well, they that's just signed it. not fair. It is. You because shoot a gun, it makes a lot of noise. It scares every other creature away. It, it gives it them a does. chance. That's not fair, sneaking up on them. <laughs> but it still does. So I'll bet you your wife doesn't hunt. Well, I don't hunt. D there you go. Yeah, he made churches for six birds. Yes. He will never get away with this oh, one. I, I'm I gonna, when I get it built, I'll send you. It's going to take me about a year and a half to build. Oh, it. I'll go up there. Yeah. A year and a half to build. <laughs> well, it took me almost a year and a half to build my first coop. It, it's pretty cool looking. Really? Oh yeah. When uh, it's so funny when the wives, uh, you know, bring their husbands because they want chickens. Yeah. And they walk around the corner of the house and they see, you know, they call it the Cadillac chicken coop. You know, it's a high rise that sits up on the air, so the chickens can go underneath it, and it's all, it looks like a little barn. And they look at it, and they're like, uh, no. No, too big. <laughs> well, it's just too fancy. Well, you get chickens, they lay eggs, I take it. Yes, yep. yeah. I mean, but I got automatic lights, and, you know, you get near the building, everything. You mean that, you mean all the, the lights come the chicken. up automatically? You know, I, I knew a guy who had a rooster. It uh, was we, really, we don't have a rooster. No, no. So what he did was he had a neighbor that he hated. Oh, yeah. So the rooster, the barn was up next to his fence. Yeah. So what he did is he put a light in, you know, that he could flick from the house. Uh. So around midnight, <laughs> he would flick it, and the rooster would start <laughs> mean, oh, mean. That is, yeah. All right, okay. Yeah. Your but suppressor. my suppressor, Bill, what it's going to do is... It, you, Does it go on? It goes on rifles. Yes, you take a 308 if you have a 308 rifle mm. or if your wife does it shoots i hope not. yeah <laughs> i hope not well it shoots at about 180 decibels that's very loud a suppressor only reduces it to 145 to 150 decibels which is still above the harmful uh, state so this just reduces it and then what it also does why it, do you want it though uh, because a lot of, you know, not to say that I want to be like Europe, no. but a lot of, you know, the few countries that still have guns over in Europe, yeah. they're making it mandatory because it makes good neighbors. And I don't ever want to go that route because well, they're very I, expensive. I want to know if people are out there shooting a gun. Well, at 140 decibels, you, you would still hear it. You're not going to hear it. You're going to hear a poof. Well, and that's the other thing. It you know? takes the high pitch. You see, the, how I know that someone's in the woods shooting is I first I hear the noise, and then, the, the, you know, the, the bears run out. Well, but then how about it. archery? Nobody's going to hear that. And there's 24,000 uh, hunters that use a bow and, and arrow. By the way, my wife is, you know, in exactly, you know, fish and game, and they were talking about that. Archery, crossbows. Yeah. Oh, Oh, she's yeah. on the fishing game committee? Yes. Well, oh, you can put in a good word for me. Yeah, yes, absolutely. <laughs> because that's where it's going. The suppressor bill's oh, going in front really? of her. really? I got four bills going in front of her. Two on Baden. Oh, really? And uh, Dear Baden, and then the suppressor bill. All and then right, one. suppressor bill. Yeah. Uh, we got the, the, the... Daycare. Daycare. Those are the two important okay. ones to me. All right. Now, you're going before... Uh, since you've been talking about animals, first of all, guns, yeah. and then suppressors on guns, give me one more. Well, it's on Deer Baden for disability people. Currently, they used to, prior to this year, anybody that wanted to bait, which very few people do, 
bait. In other words, you keep putting stuff out. The corn. The deer comes. Yep. And then and when the, the deer comes during hunting season. Yep. Then you, you get know, your deer. You, you know, he you sees lunch for our dinner. Yes. Well, what happened is Fish and Game, through their rules, not through the legislators, changed their rules and said, okay, only paraplegics and disabled veterans can bait. Okay. Well, there's a lot of other disabilities. I have a constituent that when he was in his 20s, he's in his 60s now, he was burnt 85% of his body. His fingers are missing and other stuff. I mean, it must have been a terrible accident. And he cannot traditionally hunt, but he is not a veteran, and he's not a paraplegic because he can So walk. what basically you're saying, you want to say that people who are disabled? Yes. Okay. Well, we have three minutes and 10 seconds left, so how can people get in touch with you? Uh, the easiest way is just to go onto my website, which is BurtNH.com, and that's B-U-R-T-N-H, like New Hampshire.com. And your profession is? Uh, I'm a uh, state rep, and I also own a political company. A political? Yeah. Yeah, it's Granite State Institute of Politics. Um, it's a company that's... Don't you physically work with trees? No, that's a business I used to have, and yeah. my wife won't let me take it, and my friends won't let me take it off the door until I get a new pickup. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, I did uh, it for 20 years. He's a weird person, by the way. I hope yeah. you realize that. Your friends won't let it. You... Okay. Well, I'm you an ar a I political company. Yeah, what I'm does an that arborist. Mean? I was an arborist yes. for 20 years. And yeah, so let's everybody, get, well, forget the but, trees. But the political, forget the trees, the birds, um, the baiting, You know, I put guns. on debates, and I'll have... How do you get money? Uh, uh, donations. People, <clears throat> you know, give me money to do these debates and to bring people around, and I, you know, will have guests up. You know, like I interviewed Steve Forbes. That was through, you know, stuff like that. People will come up, and, you know, I just collect money through donations. And then you have Steve Forbes on, don't you? Yep. Okay, you also have a TV show? Yes, and that's uh, New Hampshire Politics with John Burt, which is aired in Goffstown. Someday I'd like to upload it and have it aired everywhere. But... Well, I think you can. I think Richard will. Yeah, I just... Well, I mean, you have to go, you have to... Uh, ha uh, well, belong to that... City or yes. town. So yeah. you really can, we really could get these shows to go everywhere. Well, I know one of my <clears throat> debates, it was over the governor's yeah. last time in yeah. 12, uh, when I did my debate, it was in front of about three hundred and fifty to 400,000 people, and it was aired in Nashua. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. We uploaded it to that website, and cities and towns downloaded it and oh, aired wow. it. And that was the number I heard, and I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> That's a lot of people. I mean, you know, and how many watch, you know. All I'm, right. Are you, you on know, Facebook? 10, I am. Yeah. Okay, Johnny, so they get you yeah, on John Facebook. Burt, um, are you Facebook. on Twitter? I'm not. I'm going to stay off Twitter. Do you want to give your telephone number? Yeah, I could give it real quick. And my ahead. home number is 624 5084. And that's 603. Yes. And my name is Ken Gidge. And all you have to do is go to Gidge World. And by the way, if you wish to get on or to see his TV show, they can go, you can go to the computer, correct? Yes, it is on YouTube. All right, it is on YouTube. Also, our shows are put up on YouTube. So you can go to Ken Gidge or Bill O'Brien, and you might find us, or, or Beldazaro, who will be he back next week with a tan. He always looks like he has a yeah. tan. And my telephone number is 603-864-9332. Go to Gidge World, Gidge World, Gidge World, and you'll find out everything you want to know about me. Listen. Thank you for having did me on. Did you have on. a good time? I did. I had a great time. Yeah, now it goes by fast. It does, too fast. Yeah, that's right. We ought to do two hours, <laughs> but they're driveless. All right, see you later. The preceding program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.